Welcome to another episode of the Truly Kenya podcast. Um, whether you are a visual person and you are watching this on YouTube or listening to it on your favorite podcast platforms, platform, because we are everywhere, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you laugh, maybe learn a little something. Now, like I said, we are not trying to solve the, the problem the problems of the world, okay? <laughs> this is just a little escape to have a little fun for a few minutes, all right? <laughs> so, but welcome, and thank you guys so much for our being so supportive and tuning in. Today, um, I'm gonna have a conversation with DeHaley Hall. Yeah. You probably know her from Mad TV. Mm -hmm. You may know her from Dear White People, great yeah. show on Netflix, and True Love, Bad hair, mm. Grace and Frank, oh my Frankie and Grace, Grace no, and Frank, Grace, and Frank. Grace, and, Grace and Frankly, what? Grace and Frankie, okay, <laughs> which is a great show on Netflix, um, and she has a lot of other stuff going on. She also ha now has a one woman show, Spadura. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about all of that because she is on really both sides. You're on all sides of entertainment. Oh my gosh, Kenya, yeah, I am. You know, look yeah. at you, look at me doing it all. So many hats. Yes. Okay. A traditional black woman. So many hats. <laughs> so, okay. So let's just start from the beginning. So how, so you're, do you consider yourself a comedian writer? What do you, if somebody says, so what do you do? Yeah. What would you say? I think of myself as, um, yeah, I think of myself as a performer. Okay. Um, uh, I, a, 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 a trained actor, okay. but, um, and a writer as well, but um, I definitely lean towards comedy. So mm. I haven't feel like, you know, as a, I like to say comedian, but I don't tour like a stand-up yes. comic. So it's very different. So it's like I'm a comedic performer. Do you know that's what yes. I would say? So you're not like on stage telling joke after joke. You're more story. Yes. In story I'm, form? It's like a story form, but it's also I'm giving you. Yeah. Performance. Okay. I'm giving you some theater background. Yes, okay. Yes. Yes. We are going through an emotional journey. There, DeHaley can um, perform. Yes. So, like, my, uh, for example, when I was doing Mad TV, I prefer sketch show. Sketch, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, with sketch, you do have to be an actor. You have to play different characters. You have to have an emotional response to what's happening. Yes. So, those kinds of things. And, um, so yeah, I would consider myself like a, a performer. On Mad TV, was was it scripted or was it improvisational? It was scripted. Um, obviously, the actors could yeah. you know add their okay, little okay. They gave whatever. you that freedom. Yeah, to, but we mm -hmm. we we had a script, and it was it, it's it was wild because I remember when I was like testing to be on the show. They, yes. Um, they were looking for new actor. This and so I self submitted. Uh, and I was like, who knows? I mean, this is my big dream no, to be I on this, this. show. Okay. But yeah, I self-submitted and I had to go through several rounds. So the first round, you're just like with like the casting director. And then, then you get into the casting director um, ended up giving me, she was like, you're really good here. And then she was like, do you know, do other things? And I was just telling her, well, I love Oprah Winfrey. And then I just started <laughs> being her. And she was like, yes, do that in your producer session. And then you do it with the producers. And then the last thing yes. is them giving you a script and seeing how you interpret it. So it was like down to me and like two other women. Yeah. And then we had to like do the same scene. And then they, in front of the network, yes. and then they pick who is. Okay, goes. so you finish with your scene. Yeah. Okay, this is the final audition. Yes. Do you leave there like, I got it? Or like, oh, I don't know, I could have did this better or whatever. Or did you leave there, there like, I got it? Kenya, I have to tell you. Tell me the truth. I was so confident that I got it. I really, this, I am not a confident person in a lot of things. A lot of times I second guess myself. I have not picked that up. No, but it's true. I did have a five minute conversation <laughs> with her before. I did not pick up any of this part of what she is saying, the the lack of confidence no, I anywhere. Have, I'm always like. What, what, what part of your life are you not confident in? Well, I second guess every kind of choice that I'm kind of making, but the performance part, I feel more, that's the only time I like fully dialed in and very present. Yes. But yeah, I'll like. I'll pick some place to eat and I'll be like, do I really want to do that? <laughs> I'll be like, oh, should I have called that person yesterday? Oh, maybe I should send this email. No, uh, uh, I'm like that 
on everything. Even my hair. I'm like, should I have put my hair up, down? What kind of shoes should? <laughs> everything else. But when I step on stage, it's like the only thing that I can like. You're sure about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah that yeah. you're not second guessing. Yes. Yeah. So, are you an only child? Oh my! You saw that? Do I just radiate only child? You do. <laughs> well, just from that. Yes. Yeah, I am an only child. Yeah. Oh. Wait, can you tell me what is the only child? Uh, like? I'm an only child. Oh, really? So what do we have? That... And my mother didn't even want me. She wanted me to be a boy. Okay. What? So <laughs> yes. Wait, did she? How did you find this out? She told you? Oh, she she told me my whole life. You know, what? you know, I wanted you to be a boy. Oh, for sure. Yes. Oh my god. She gosh. was a great mother, but she maybe would have been better had I been a boy. That is so wild. I yes. only want a girl. Like, that's like my, I, w I wonder if I ever have a, like a son or if I would feel that way about him. But um, no, I mean, I think she lucked out with a, with you. Uh, I think she, I think she feels that now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But no. Was yeah. she just worried? Like, cause sometimes people have this She feeling. thought girls were too much. I don't oh. want to deal with all that. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I only want one kid. Right. And I want it to be as simple as possible. I do not want to have to deal with the whole girl stuff. She is a, um, she is very logical. She's not really an emotional. Like she tells me she loves me and, you know, she's super supportive and all that. But she is dollars and cents, like, like, like an accountant all right. day. And, um, you know, and I'm coming, I'm, I'm very girly, like, yes, emotional, you are. like this hurt my feelings or when you did this, this is how it made me feel. You know what I mean? Right. And she's just like, Wait, what? You She's know like, what I, I mean? didn't want to deal with emotion. Yeah. What are you talking about? I thought it was also because, you know, James Brown's like, this is a man. <laughs> so, she, so she thought, I just want her no. to not have to deal with any of that patriarchy. No, it wasn't no, about me. It was, me. Not it was what her. would make her life wow. simpler, you Mother's know, easier. Day. I know, right? And I'm very good to her. Very good to her. You know what I mean? What's your relationship with your father? Well, my father passed away um, when I was six. Mm. But what I do remember, um, so because he died when I was so young, yes. I have memories of like when I was two and three, oh. whereas when I speak to people who still have fathers or have fathers much longer, they don't remember the younger years of being with their father, mm -hmm. but they remember like older things and, you know, yes. when they were older, uh, those sort of memories. So I only had like, you know, like what, three years of memories, but he was lovely. He was um, supportive. I mean, he, you know, it was Oakland. So, I mean, he was wild. You know, he was a wild dude, was, was, but he used to write um, oh, wow. me, like, the most beautiful letters. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. So I don't have a lot, but, you know, even when he was going through it with, with um, my mother, like, towards the end, they were separating or whatever, he was still so loving. I just remember yeah. him still being very loving to me. Yes. And always making sure my mother was okay yeah you that's a big I mean? imprint on a, a daughter to have that yeah. kind of yeah yeah well, and so yeah. when they talk about your first love for me he really was my first love and I think as I date I still look for that level of care and protection yes and all of that yeah, yeah that's great now yeah. what about you I have a very close relationship with my father um yes. it wasn't always like this um weirdly like I I loved my father so much as a little kid. And Were they together, your parents? Yes, my okay. parents. Yeah, they're still together. Okay. Um, they met in college, and um, they're still together. I can't believe, like, they they met at, like, 19. Yes. And they got married, I think, at, like, 23. Wow. And I can't believe they're still together. But um, no, not that I can't believe they're still together. It's just that I now understand that who I was at 20 is very different than who I am now. Oh, for sure. And so to have a partner that can roll with you through that development is like really mm -hmm. magical. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. But yeah, with my father, um, he's very charismatic mm -hmm. and he's he's an architect and he's has a very he has an entrepreneurial spirit. And he was kind of very driven and like a little bit of a perfectionist. No, a lot of a perfectionist. So um and my mother is um my father's from Jamaica and my mother's from oh, Haiti. Okay. I see. Yeah. And um, so they're both from the islands, both spoke different languages. Um, uh, but they had this kind of full buppy like feeling. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like 
uh, one kid. They wanted to like ha- experience the best things in yes, life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But I felt a lot of pressure, you know, mm-hmm. because of that. I felt like I was like. Because you were first generation? Yeah, were first you? generation. Okay. So it was like I also grew up in like that Cosby show era. So th- and they're two professionals. Um, yes. And so they were, I just had like, remember being like on the kitchen table and they would just like drill me with flashcards and stuff like that. And it was just. That was me with my kids in line at Disneyland. We were doing brain, really? brain quest. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it was. But worked. it's too intense. <laughs> and then they also appreciated how precocious I was and how I was always with adults and I would like make them laugh. But then there was also like a part of them that wanted to like really? reel it back mm-hmm. in a little bit. And so in my. In my twenties and my teen, like late teen years, like when I went off to college, that's when I was like really trying to push back. Like, yes, I have my own life. I want to wear my Did hair. Did you become this a way. slut? Were you no? Promiscu- Can I tell you what? When you went away. Honestly, Kenya, I wish I had, but the Catholic school that I went, to, I went to Catholic school for so long and okay. was so I indoctrinated. And so scared of going to off the rails. Even though they say, like, the preacher kids are usually the wild ones. They but, are. But I wasn't. Like, I was, like, so afraid. Uh-huh. Like, I have a joke that in my... That you're going to go to hell? Yeah. I had uh-huh. a joke in my show where my aunt says to me in my ear, chastity, 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 <laughs> before going off to college. You know what I mean? Like, if I were to ever t- instruct any of, like, my daughters yes. now or something, I would be like, go for it. Right. I would tell them, like, how to protect themselves. But I was like, have every experience. Do everything. But my parents were so awkward with explaining to me about sex. And do it you, made it so do you weird. remember your parents? Did they talk, even talk to you about sex? Yes. I remember it clear as day. Oh, well, my mother just dropped me down. Uh, uh, I just had, like, a, like five books. That was my conversation about really? sex. Really? Yeah. Books, but she was not... Yeah, well, I also got the pamphlets from my mom, too. But I remember we were watching, I think, an episode of, like, Maury Povich or Jerry. I don't know what it was. Yeah. And it was, like, the 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 guests, these women were, like, you know, having sex, doing stuff. And my dad was like, wow, these ladies are so wild. And then I was just like, Dad, this <laughs> was my first year of, like, or second year of college. Yeah. I was like, I'm not a virgin. <laughs> I've had sex. And he was like, huh? Harriet, <laughs> Harriet, the- get in here. And talk to her. Like Whatever we were actually, I think I he was um speaking somewhere and I went on <laughs> uh, I was on this, I was like out of town with him like while he was speaking. So when we got back to my back to um Florida on my um like uh, he I think he told my mom because the next morning I found all these pamphlets on my bed. So yes, just like your yes. mom, all these pamphlets yes. about sex mm-hmm. and the. But the I risks. also read, um, "Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret." So I kind of found out some things, yeah, through the Judy Bloom series. But I was, was still fantastic. a virgin until I was eighteen. Oh my gosh, we're the same. Yeah, we're until the same. I was eighteen. I lost my virginity to another virgin. It was. Oh actually... no, nah, he wasn't a virgin. Mine wasn't a virgin. He had oh. been around a block. Oh but... really? <laughs> yes, but I was a virgin. <laughs> but it was sweet. We was like the blind leading the blind, but it was very pleasurable. We we both, yeah. you know, were like, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> oh, it's weird. Okay, so are you still in contact at all with the, my person? Yeah, like through Facebook, because you know. Facebook yeah, I know. Is... He know. Oh, yeah, we know really? each other. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Did he turn out the way you? Did his life turn out the way you thought it would? He was also not helpful because even though that first experience was fine, he had tremendous amount of guilt from it because he was Christian. And then, which all I think kind of inflamed my own, like, oh, no. Because at first I was like, nothing happened to us. Right. We should just do this all day. This is fantastic. (laughs) And he was like, no, you can't try to drag me down, Ethan. And I was like, what? And, hell. Yeah, and I was like, "What are you doing? We like nothing happens to us. We're and so he, he messed my head up with with making me feel bad about it. So um, I think yeah. So I do know him, but I'm glad that did not work yes. out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, like when I look back now, and um, I haven't had a lot of boyfriends. I haven't had a lot of sexual partners, or whatever. But when I do look back, I'm like. God knew he what he was doing for every partner that it didn't work out for. Like yeah. even in the mid, you know, in the midst of it, I may be like, uh-huh, you know, crying or whatever. Yeah. Um. That's how I cried was over my first baby daddy. But, um. Yeah. So it's just, you know, like I get why you're, you know, it didn't work out with us. You know what yeah, I mean? I yeah. didn't at the time. Like I had the. 
biggest crush on Todd Bridges. That would have oh. been a fucking disaster. Yeah. Just to tell you the truth. Okay. Yes, it would have. So, um, you know, had he and I ever gotten together, which we didn't. And, and in fact, he did come to Oakland once, but Ooh. he didn't pay me any mind okay. at all. What? But that was his it's, God protecting that me. That is okay? that is for sure. All right. And I'm sure Todd Bridges is a lovely, a lovely. Shout out to Todd Bridges. Is Todd Bridges, Bridges still alive? I think so. Okay. Well, I'm sure he is lovely, living his life, super yeah. happy. Is he still working? I don't know. He, okay. Okay. He's probably not working, but maybe he's getting residual checks. Yes. Hopefully he is. Yeah. I'm sure he's doing fine. He's doing, he's having his own different strokes. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Love the callback. Love it. Okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. So when you think of all the things you've been a part of, Ooh. rather in front of the screen, off the screen, on stage, so what was think. your most memorable or pleasurable mm -hmm. experience? And it could be like your interaction with another actor. Yeah. It could be like just something that was funny, a scene. I love this question. Um, so I really loved... So I really love creating stuff for myself. Like I, you asked me, what am I? Am I a performer? I mean, I write, and I usually I write for myself. Yeah. You know. Um, but you've been a part of some really good things. Thanks. You know. Yeah. So I, you have a lot to choose from. I I do. I and I think the thing that's been really so exciting and i don't i think like you said sometimes like there's there's that divinity that kind of creates a design mm -hmm. of your life and you don't even realize it is like all the things that i've been on i think have said something do you know what i mean they have i'm i'm proud of them they have like an angle that they're mm -hmm. supporting so I, the reason why i was gonna say because you asked me which one yes. i think it was you know one of my first short films that i did like a long time I can't believe it was like now several years ago yeah. um it was called the memo it was about this brother not getting the memo that the black revolution was starting yes and so he was the one that brother who didn't get the memo uh -huh. yeah and at the time that I did it was like in the early 2000s yeah. um people it was there was a reaction of like oh my gosh this is really militant this is wild what are you doing yeah daily? but right now but right so now it's timely exactly <laughs> I also felt like I was like uh, ahead of what what was happening yeah and um but that's been a big so I've and I've had to like also embrace um wearing those hats do you know what I mean yeah. I think sometimes particularly for me because I've I'm in the show and I've written it I feel like I have to relinquish some other task but I ended up um directing that as well and so I think I'm proud of that because I I felt like I did something mm -hmm. ahead of its time and I and mm -hmm. I owned it for yeah. that. And so shout out to my producer at the time who like pushed me to yeah. to, to direct it as well. And just for for you like of all the things that you've done, yeah, and are doing, yes, that that is the one that you know stood out to you or brought you the most pleasure or the most enjoyable is. You know, so many years later, I think it's... Well, you know why? Because cool. I really am so proud of being on Dear White People. I'm so proud of, like, the things that I've How done. did you get on Dear... I love that show. Oh, so how did you get I love on that. that yeah, I'll tell how you. Did, how did that happen? Um, well, I was just going to say the reason why I like... the re I got on Dear White People because um, I had actually met the creator of uh, it, on, uh, creator of the show, Justin Simeon, mm -hmm. On another show called um, Brain Food Daily, that participant media, they were trying, participant mm -hmm. media was doing. They were doing like this kind of like daily show for their channel, and so I was a a host, and so I was taking news content and making it funny, and I was also a host. And then we met, and we really connected. And then he was telling me he was working on a a feature film called Dear White People that ended up being like a TV show. Mm -hmm. And then I auditioned for it, and I became this reoccurring. Ian Lavant kind mm -hmm. of character, um, like an Oprah Ian La, like yeah. reoccurring. And then in the last season, I got to I wrote on the show as oh, a, wow. a writer. Okay. And the reason why I, w I mentioned the memo that I did with mm -hmm. a another producer, a friend of mine, his name is Tendo Nagenda, who's doing very well in this industry too, is because. For me, it solidified what I said I wanted to do from the beginning. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I invested in myself. It mm -hmm. was the time that I was like, I'm. I I shot it on thirty five millimeter Kenya. Oh wow! It um because I wanted to. Wait, be... you were shooting it yourself also? 
Well, no, I not a direct, not a okay. cinematographer. Okay. I'm just saying we we did okay. short ends on it. It was like a seven minute film. So, mm -hmm. but it it we were talking about earlier before we started this mm -hmm. um, podcast about investing in yes. yourself, and so that's why it means so much to yeah. invest. And I also felt like it defined me as a person who wanted to say things that maybe yeah. are uncomfortable for yeah. people, maybe awkward. Yeah, and it branded me as a a person who was using comedy to talk about social right. stuff. Right. So. Now, in my work, I get to do that. You know, mm -hmm. Dear White People is a perfect example of that. Right. Matt TV, we got to also right. take apart different things. And even in, like, Grace and Frankie, you're putting people of a certain age on air and mm -hmm. showing that they have sexual lives yes. and care. And so I feel like I like that I was able to brand myself first mm -hmm. as that type of person mm -hmm. and then have subsequently other projects that I do right. show enforce that part of me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know. I think that... Because um, you can't say like, oh, DeHaley became conscious once she was on Dear White People. No. No, no, no. This no, has no. been... Right. The memo. It's been, okay. yeah, from the... Yeah, you better go jump. back to the memo. Yeah, you better go back to the memo. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that. Um, so would you say all of your experiences... Have you ever had a bad experience? Oh, yes. Sister woman. Bad experiences. Really? Where do I start? Like, was it an actor that maybe wasn't nice to you, or just the whole vibe was off, or like a time you're like, why the fuck am I here? I'll tell you this. There's two bad experiences. One, I will take personal responsibility for. Okay. And sometimes... When you're first starting out, you can feel so insecure. You can mm -hmm. feel like you start to like grasp at everything, thinking mm -hmm, that that's mm -hmm. the opportunity you have to have, and you're just like mm -hmm. so desperate for it, and you're just like holding on to right. things. And I don't feel like sometimes I distrusted the process of mm -hmm. like releasing, working with people, knowing like you don't necessarily need to have, like it's all about collaboration, mm -hmm. being more expansive, knowing that things are gonna come to you and not gripping onto every mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's one thing. The other part that I felt, and I still feel like it still happened, well, I feel like I've always been a straight shooter yes. and I don't think it always necessarily worked out for me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I started in the early aughts, the early mm -hmm. 2000s, and that was when the industry was very gaslit okay. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, go for your dreams. But there was sexual harassment that mm -hmm. was covert. No Racism mm -hmm. was like covert. They're like, no, we have people of color here. Right. But you had to kind of fit mm -hmm. into a box mm -hmm. in order to move up the ranks. And I didn't clock things. I would always say things like, this doesn't make sense. I don't like that. And I would be, I could feel me seemingly being Them shut being, out. I was yeah. gonna say, yeah. And I don't, and sometimes I, like I can tell you this now as a person, like I wondered like, oh man, if I had just played a little bit m better with people mm -hmm. and just been like, kept my opinions, so, even when I saw things that I felt like were injustice, yeah. Could maybe I could be further along. Maybe I could be, you know, have mm -hmm. more money in the bank. It wouldn't be true to me, but I it it is a hard thing to see that in the industry because you see that if you, it's a it's a, a psychological mind game yes. to like recognize like keep your integrity. I'm not to say the people who didn't do it keep their integrity, yeah. but you know what I mean. Sometimes, but you know what I what I want to say to that is maybe you're right. Maybe you would be further. You know what I mean? Yes. However, I do, but maybe you be further and not happy. So mm -hmm. I do think, so I believe in God, I'm Christian. Yes. That what is meant for you really is meant for you. Okay. Yeah. You may not understand how you got it or where it's coming from or how this person even knows you or whatever, but if it's meant for you, it's meant for you. I it's believe that with love. I believe that with work, opportunity, everything. Yes. So no, you know, but just think about the lessons that you learn from all of that, all of those experiences, good and bad. You know what I mean? I just think it's going to be be a part of your e true Hollywood story. It's so true, and that's what, and that's the part that I was mm -hmm. telling you was the bad, the, was the negative part, right? Because when you were holding on to those kinds of things, you create a bitterness, you create a feeling like, well, if I had done this and that, yeah. And so it took some time. For me to also just embrace, like I was just telling yeah. you, 
to let that go. Those are things like you're always in the now. Yeah. Those things are not failures. Those things are just parts of things that you learn from mm-hmm. and you grow from. Mm-hmm. But you you sometimes this world can feel very binary. Yeah. Either you're winning or you're losing. Mm-hmm. And instead of recognizing that that it's not I'm I'm a Buddhist. We yes. believe in cause and effect. So okay. you just put out the best causes you can. Wait, wait, wait. You're Buddhist. Your parents are Catholic. My my mother's Catholic. My father's agnostic. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting in itself. But yeah. when you go home to say, Mommy, I am a Buddhist. Yeah. What does she say? So was she accepting? I think she accepted. I don't think I don't. I think they didn't think that I would be practicing for as long as I have. Oh, that's probably true. Like, yeah, they thought it. They thought it was like. I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So Catholic school. So Catholic Catholicism. I had a lot of like issues with some things. I felt yeah. like the Virgin Mary was an impossible standard virgin mm-hmm. and a mother. Mm-hmm. I felt like, you know, she. We pray to her a lot, and I don't mean to like. Any Catholics out yes. there, no shade yes. or yes. any Christians. The, these are just her experiences. These are just my experiences. Personally. Okay. I've always been a strong, um, uh, I've always been a strong supporter of women. Mm-hmm. And I just felt that when I was in Catholic school, seeing that only the priests were doing the service and, you know, they mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. kinds of things had an impression on me. And I just felt like it wasn't necessarily egalitarian mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Um and for Christianity, I mean, I've definitely gone to a lot of church and um, and g- gotten up to say, yeah. yes, I will get, uh, you know, saved yeah. in this moment. But How I, do you find, like, does somebody invite you to Buddhist? Like, like what is it? Well, like, this, Buddhism, right? It would be Bo- Buddhism, okay. yeah. Buddhism. Okay. So with Buddhism. How do you find that? It, I found it in three different ways. One, I heard the chanting. I, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Tina Turner chants yes. Nam Myoho yes. Renge Kyo. Okay, yes. So I, a guy I was dating chanted Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I chanted with him, but I didn't know anything about the practice. Okay. And then my grandmother and aunt were very sick, and I remember going, being at a book fair and picking up a book called Buddha in Your Mirror. And weirdly, it was the book about the thing I had been chanting years earlier. And I was like, wow, if I were to ever design a religion, mm-hmm. this would be it. Because it talked about it talked about everyone having an innate divinity, mm-hmm. um, that we are all whole and and we have to recognize and we live in a world where we forget our God, our mm-hmm. our, our divinity, mm-hmm. how we're connected to the universe. And I was like, oh, this is like really empowering to mm-hmm. know that. At every moment, you can change anything in the course of your life because you have the power of the universe within you. Mm -hmm. And I also appreciated that um, it put everyone on the same level and pedestal because I often felt like when I would be at church, it would be like, this person knows things because they are above you and Mm -hmm. you have to follow them. And this religion encouraged you or this practice yeah. encouraged you to study, encouraged you to practice. It it, it was about your your own um, yeah putting in your own work. And I feel like now we're in this society where, you know, sometimes we look for somebody to save us, and like some politician or some thing mm-hmm. or some superhero. But really, the power is within us, mm-hmm. and we have to like be more educated, take those next steps to like fix our own lives. Nobody's going to come in and right. swoop down. And so sometimes what, what I felt with Christianity, I felt like I had to, um, I, I felt like I, I, f- again, this is just for me. Yeah. No shade. It, it allowed more of a, uh, a hierarchical feeling. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you could be like, look down on someone because maybe they are not, where they should be Mm -hmm. instead of realizing that every person no matter where they are in life has the potential you know right and i will say this about christian if if you ever come across a christian that is looking down and being judgmental about somebody else that's not a real christian that's not a real christian i know so and that's the that's the fundamental thing the christianity that i believe in is very similar to the buddhism Mm -hmm. and i've also talked to muslim people and the the muslim uh that there is this we the, all three of those religions mm-hmm. if you really 
at the core. At the core. Mm -hmm. If you really are trying to be decent to Mm -hmm. each person, Mm -hmm. then you're practicing it correctly. Mm -hmm. But if you are rejecting someone, feeling like they're not enough or what have you, then you might have to reevaluate if that's, if you're really practicing it correctly. So... Um, we went into it, Kenya. We did. That's we okay. went into it. That's okay. That's great. Cause said, yeah. You said God. Uh, Jesus said, you know, love, uh, you know, love you as love someone as you would love yourself. Yes. Treat your neighbor as you would yourself. Yes. So I mean, that's truth. Uh, yeah. And I now that is a real Christian. Okay. Mm-hmm. Person, okay. That practices that. But now you you've been in the industry for a while. Yes. And then you ha- now have this one woman show. I love it. I love how you're pivoting. Fedora. Do it. Okay. So tell us about it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, as we have already established, I like to address things with comedy that are ch- difficult and use humor with it. And for me, um, I was in the pandemic. My husband and I were yes. trying to become parents. Yes. And I was having, I was struggling with it. And, you know, I was. Naturally, you were trying to be. Yeah, naturally, we're we're trying to. Yeah, and the funny thing is, like, I had been drilled from the time I was small that, you know, you are around some dick, you're going to get pregnant. You know, that's, uh, you're around uh, a woman, a man together, pregnancy. Like, I was always Mm. like. Uh, scared as yes. a, a uh, oh. to be an unwed mother. That that was yes. like the big yes. thing that was right. always like thrown. So I just assumed that once you just stop using protection, right. that's gonna right happen. And so it it was a, definitely a struggle, and I learned so much in the whole process of getting pregnant. Did the struggle consume you? Like trying it, to get pregnant, did it ever just consume you? It did consume mm-hmm. me, mostly because. I didn't expect it to be so important to me. Mm. Um, I've always been very career driven. Like I joke that Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to have my own comedy special on TV, Mm -hmm. even more that ranked higher than, you know, Mm -hmm. motherhood Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. like marriage at the point. Like that was like what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I was really surprised at how upset I was at my own body. And Mm. I felt I'll be candid, I think a bit of shame because you as a woman, society kind of conditions women to feel like their purpose is motherhood Mm -hmm. um, or being wives or what have you. And I rejected that. But then when I was like, when I want to do it, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw that that wasn't happening, I was like, oh, uh, wow. And it made me kind of very um, upset. Mm -hmm. Um, I also did not like the idea of age being a factor, Mm. you know, I thought that that was so upsetting. I mean, Robert De Niro just had a baby at 79. I'm just like, what is happening here? You know what I mean? And I'm on birth control right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then she's like, well, I said, why would I be on birth control? I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm too old to be on birth control. She was like, well, you're still producing eggs. I said, they're not eggs anybody wants. (laughs) That sperm does not want that old ass egg. Okay. But here I am on Mirena. Oh, you are. But yeah. see, this is my this is my point. And I also feel like women get stigmatized yes. having children later in life. They're like, oh, why are you Do gonna- you think that is I- happening now? I when- feel like we're in a bubble with yes. L.A. because L.A., most women are women having are so children. so career-driven. Yeah, where it's... most women are having women in their late, uh, children in their late 30s and 40s, yeah. et cetera. I mean, Jan Jackson had a baby at 50. Right. So and I don't the- want to be Jan Jackson, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Debrat is having a baby yeah. at yes. like 40. So- but the rest of the world, you know, having a child, um, and also, I also don't like how obsessed people are about, like, once you partner, you have to have a child. Do you hate that question? I hate that question. When, when are you guys having, do you? I do really people, hated mm-hmm. it. But the irony is, once I started doing the show, yeah, I, people stopped asking me that question. Uh-huh. One, they uh-huh. got, they understood yes. and then they also were more compassionate to me mm. like i remember some one of my friends was being like really like i really think you need to be focusing on this even though she had not realized that i would been oh. we had and so i think my show allows people to have some sensitivity around it because yes. i mean have you saw all the controversy around love is blind when yes. um Vanessa Lachey was just 
aggressively asking every okay. contestant on that dating Listen, show. Listen, I'm not a producer or anything, but they don't even need the Lachey's on that show. I, I, I'm sorry. They just don't. Oh, I don't even get what I was ready to sign that okay. petition if it came to me. Right. To have. It, they don't even need. They no. don't. And I didn't get what she was doing. It was it was that whole reunion was weird. It was so weird. The things that they would just when are you, 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 you know, when are you, when are you? And like, shut the fuck up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're traveling. We're hanging out. We're we, hanging out. We're I living mean, our lives. We're trying to spend I didn't this. get <laughs> what? She was like a dog with a bone. Yes. And I, you know what I think it is, Kenya? What is it? I th other than that, they need to be fired? What is it? <laughs> I think people don't know what to do. When? They feel awkward. And so they just throw in like babies. They, it's like. Okay. You know what I mean? And I just feel like okay. you Let's deal. take that and run with it. Let's take it and that, run with that it. That would be okay for someone walking off the street that has never hosted. Okay? Mm-hmm. I would, okay, I would give you that. Yeah. They've hosted a lot of different things. Yes. I just don't think they are needed for the format in which Love is Blind is. And if you're going to do it, it shouldn't be them. I don't care. I don't care how experienced you want to say that they are. They did a terrible job they did a fucking terrible job and they should not be asked to return period i would never watch another finale i'll just watch a clip if they're a part of it i 100 yeah. percent believe you and i think it's because these people have very i'm sorry i don't know nick or yeah. vanessa liche i apologize but they have very basic thoughts about how life should be lived do you think they even watched the show i'm not even sure i think they watched the show oh you think they're just queued up with different things I don't, I don't know i was just so i you know right now i'm just being such a hater but i don't even think they watch the fucking show okay they so, probably don't i don't know but when i with my show with fedora the reason why i one of the reasons why i was so shocked about my reaction to um not to not getting pregnant or being a mother yeah is that I also felt very tied to my only childness, mm -hmm. you know? That is pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do love my parents so much. Like, we have mm -hmm. such an incredible bond. And I think it was because I started practicing Buddhism. Mm -hmm. I stopped trying to make them better or make them see me. Mm -hmm. I just accepted them as mm -hmm. who they were. Mm -hmm. And I also had compassion for the reasons why they were wanting me to be a certain way was because, you know, they came to this country wanting the, everything for me. And so I stopped taking it so personally. And so I was like, wow, I have such a beautiful relationship with my parents now. I really see them as human beings. We talk about everything. And I would want their genes to live on within them. And so it was so frustrating for me for this to not happen. And then just see people like Robert De Niro right and left just making babies. I'm like, I'm a good parent. I've... I was responsible. I found the right partner. I right. waited till the time was right. right. And then it just doesn't work. Well, if your partner doesn't mind, yeah. you should call Future or Nick Cannon um, or Ari. I, I did an interview. You so I did an much, interview. Kenya, Look, right no, now. Listen, Nick Cannon is going to forget he impregnated you anyways. Okay? First of and all. And Future ain't trying to be a part of it. Now, Ari the Sperminator. Oh, my gosh. I heard that what, was on your show. Yeah. But can good. I just say this? Yeah. For Future. The problem is not with my husband. It is with me. Oh, no, me. no. I am not saying. I, okay. It I is with not, me. Okay. So when, okay. So I suggested it is with me. that, that I'm sorry. I'm by me, sorry by, to by, the by, mister. <laughs> I do not think there's anything wrong with your sperm. And I don't even think there's anything wrong with you. Well, not a problem with me. Yeah. I'm just saying like the medical community considers. I just think Nick, Future, and Ari the Sperminator can get anybody fucking pregnant. Period. Really? I, Every time you turn around, Nick got somebody pregnant. But all and of his all of his ladies are like in their twenties. Okay, so maybe that could be true. Yeah, I mean, I but had you want to, to admit, know something. Yes. when he when he finally got to the black girl, the model, the Nisha. I'm not sure what her name is. I apologize. Yeah, and he had the first like real black baby. Yeah, real black baby meaning black. Yes. Okay, not like mixed and all that biracial. Kind of stuff. Biracial. Or yeah. Um, and I knew I knew she was gonna be a problem. Why? I think because I think. She was feeling, I'm getting older. We've dated before. You know what I mean? And then what I, happened with her? So she has the baby, super cute little girl. And he, she, her baby was the one. Do you remember? That died? Was, no, 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 no. Her baby was the one he forgot to name. He was on, was it Howard Stern or somebody he was naming? And he named all the kids except her baby. But oh. she didn't met this other guy that is so cute and okay. act like he loved a baby. So we don't even need Nick. And I don't think she's tripping off Nick. I think she's like, thank you for the gift. 
Oh, I love okay, it. Okay, go do you and your other 12. Thank you for the gift. Yes. Yes, yes. It's too much. 12 yeah. is like, what? Are, how are we? Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. Uh, it, it is too much, okay? It is too much. And um, and then Ari says, what? so, okay, so you and your husband can try this. Ari says the best way to get pregnant, and he has like over 100 kids, okay? And sometimes he's doing this, this in is a Target very dis- or whatever. I'm just <laughs> letting you disturbing. know. Ari said you only need one of those period cups. They're like 99 cent. Do you know what a period cup is? Oh, I do not. So I, he, yeah. just try it. Just try it. Just humor me. Okay. So your husband will come in the cup. Okay. And then you insert it because that is the closest. You put, can push it all the way up there. Let me just tell you I'm this. I'm telling you, it works. Tell Ari you has what? over 100 and something kids. You just, listen, but let me tell you this. 99 cent. That's all it costs I'm you to try t- it. I will. So just stick it on up there. And then I think, I'm adding this part. Okay. I think you lay back. Tell your husband, or if you can't do it yourself, you tell your husband, come in here and hold these legs up. I'm telling you. And then you're going to text me and say, girl, I, I am fucking pregnant. Okay? And I if love it what doesn't you're happen, right then you put it in your show. Like, this bitch tried to tell me to use a period cup. And da 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 And she was wrong. <laughs> well, but, I will say this. What I did end up learning yes. from the process is that, yes, you can definitely do that. But also... Black women in general yeah. are affected. I talked about, like, black women in America have a lot of... I, I don't ha- have fibroids that are significant or anything like that. But black women in America have are have more rapidly aging uteruses and fibroids due to racism. Mm-hmm. And that's just a fact. It doesn't matter whether she's mm-hmm. rich or poor, yeah. even... As ed, as educated as all has that, I think effect. mostly every black person, woman in my family, I am the exception mm-hmm. so far. Yeah, has had fibroids. Yes, it's a big, it's a yeah. big deal. And huh. what it is is that it does affect us on a cellular level. And like, look, I'm first generation, so it's not even it's black women in America. It's not even in the continent or the diaspora. Mm-hmm. But what what ends up happening is your body is like a, a sponge. And so when you, whatever toxicity or stress you've endured in your life does trickle down to your eggs. Mm-hmm. And so the older you get, mm-hmm. the, 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 the challenge, the, 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 the more toxicity your eggs have been exposed to. Sure. Which makes fertility a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. So that is why you could see this younger woman who's like binging, drinking all day, doing lines at night, mm-hmm. still making those mm-hmm. babies, whereas it is a challenge right. for that. Right. So, I, I mean, so I appreciate the Dixie Cup, but sometimes I and I had to see that yeah. sci- there is a thing about it. And are, I also, but are you willing to go outside of like, like, do you have you yet went to like a specialist or yes, are you yes? Not there oh, and that's yet? my sh- my show also talks about IVF. It talks yes. about all sorts of different things like that. Yeah. And IVF is like, I thought if, the way they talk about IVF is like it, this is like you just do this and that's an instant pregnancy moment. But IVF is also. Uh, you it know, took my girlfriend three times. Yeah, it's not one and, and done thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's very expensive. Mm-hmm. So I think the show, ta- through my own like personal experience, yeah. lets people understand like what's happening, how mm-hmm. our bodies work, and I think it, and I do it in a comedic way. Yeah. But it is like a full journey, and yeah. what I realized was how ignorant I was with mm-hmm. the whole process. I thought Me. I mm-hmm. knew stuff, mm-hmm. and then I realized, you mm-hmm. know, I didn't. Right. Um. And so yeah, I've. I've done I've done legs in the air. So, so what happens like though? That. Like, what if you um, don't naturally conceive, or you through IVF? Would you adopt, or do you, have you just come to a point where we've realized if it doesn't happen for us, it wasn't meant to happen, or do you you know keep trying? You know, that's a great question. I mean, that's also. A point in the show yeah. that is that 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 gets discussed, and I mean I, no spoilers. So that's why I really I think the thing that I love about with the show is that it's a communal experience yeah. with the audience. Yeah, I'm 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 the reason why 
it's important for me to have people come to the show is like I am literally sharing my life with you. Mm -hmm. I am being very vulnerable with mm -hmm. you on stage mm -hmm. and like being super candid. Mm -hmm. So all I ask for you in exchange for me to be this yeah. real with you is that you buy a ticket and sit with me. Yeah. Which is why, because people are like, why don't you just live stream it or just like say, it's like, I don't want just someone to just in passing, just like catch a little bit of it. I need us to like. I want you present. Present. Mm -hmm. I want us to, I feel like that's the beautiful thing about theater is just mm -hmm. like, you have this organic exchange. And I, and I like the theater because I'm on stage, the lights are bright, so I can't really see you guys in yeah. the audience, but I can feel you. Do you feel and like then it's you your can bubble? have your like so like that's yeah. how I feel about my podcast. Like yeah. some of the things that I talk about, especially when I'm alone, like mm -hmm. it's just me, no guest. Um, it feels like a protective bubble yes. to me. Um, and um, probably when I am most intimate and feel like truly connected to the listeners. And people that are watching or, or listening, um, it it is a it's a safe place. That's what it's I should say. It's a safe space. And um, and I was for people that are struggling. So I had three. Yeah. And then when I hit when did you have 40, your first child? Twenty three. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do think like if you have a child earlier, yeah. it kind of preps your body to be like. This lady is making babies. I do think so. I don't know. I could be oh, wrong. No. And then I had the next one 10 years later. Mm -hmm. But and then when I turned 40, I went into severe baby fever. Mm. And it just wasn't happening for me. So my story is different. Yeah. It just wasn't happening. They put me on chlor... What is the chlor... Clomid. 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 Yeah. S still wasn't happening. So it's a trip. Like now you go to the doctor, she's like... You you need birth, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think now when I look back, like, you know, I'm not married to that person anymore. So maybe that, you know, God saw for me. Right, yeah. That you want it, but you don't need it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, you really don't need it for a number of reasons. Yes. Um, and I thought I was being punished mm -hmm. because, you know, prior to 23, I was pregnant and I decided not to have a kid. Yeah. So I thought, Okay, yeah. here's the punishment. Here's the punishment. Yeah, yeah. A lot of guilt. I had a lot, a lot of, a lot of guilt about. Thank that. you for sharing that. Yeah. No, I, 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 I really. So when I'm you joking about Ari and all this sort of yeah. stuff, I get the pain. I joke about everything though. No, I'm glad you, you know, do. I, I do. So I think it's my way of dealing with things that may be uncomfortable. Also, no, yeah. To me, but um, so I don't understand you know, maybe the level of hurt, I understand maybe a different hurt. You know what I mean? No, it's so true. Because I just took for granted, oh, I'll have another one. And it was like, no, no, you're not. I'm not right now. But it's the same level, too. It's just like you felt like you you did what you had to do when you were, before you were 23, mm -hmm. but now you want this and it's not happening. And it, mm -hmm. it, and it hurts because you're like, and I think also as a woman, mm -hmm. I remember meeting a friend of mine who had a baby and she wanted another one mm -hmm. and she wasn't, able to do it and I in my mind I was like well you still you have your baby yeah. though at least yes. I don't have them yes. and then I through this journey mm. I was like oh no we're both so wait a minute feeling... so people maybe without without kids are sometimes judgmental about us with kids like what are you complaining about oh, who cares yes. if you had a temper tantrum at least you have them like are you but are now I don't feel that way anymore oh, because I, I recognize it's a loss. If you want something and you don't have that thing that you're trying right. for, it's hard. You could have five kids and want right. that six and that it's, it's not it's not a one like yes. just get another right. thing and, that, and that's do you, it. Do people that are or are in um, like trying to actively have kids and maybe having a harder time, mm -hmm. do they not want to hear good stories or bad stories about other people's kids? Like, is it just like... I don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? It really depends. Like, like, a lot of times people are like, oh, you should join, like, some fertility groups and be that. It's hard to be in fertility groups because everyone is going through their own process. Some people are like, 
oh my gosh, I went to the sperminator. Yeah. I put <laughs> and, and I got pregnant right away. I did the little, mm -hmm. I did the the ninety nine cent the, the ninety nine cent <laughs> cup, and it worked. I just rubbed some coconut oil in my belly button. It worked. And then someone else. Okay, was doing, that was kind of stupid for me to say, but no, no, no I'm saying, but it happens. <laughs> yeah. And then you try to do it. Yeah. And it doesn't work. And then you're like. Then it starts to make you feel like, well, what's wrong with me? I did everything she did. I took yes. the same supplements. And then that's when I realized you c everyone's journey is so different. Like, sure, um, we can all. So I, I personally, for my own sake, mm -hmm. decided not to um, uh, follow the journey of other people. But, yeah. Well, I hope it happens for you. Oh, thanks. I, I hope it happens for you if it's supposed to happen yes. for you. And if it doesn't happen for you, I just hope that it that you find some peace and that it didn't happen and that you're fucking traveling all over the world doing you living and your Kenya, best life. And Kenya, mostly I wanted to give transparency to those women. No, I think it's great. Because I don't feel like, Spadura. you know, we don't talk about it as much. Right. Spadura. Spadura. Spadura, yeah. S-P-A-D-U-R-A. Yeah. -A. Correct. So, um, okay, so I know. I know we're wrapping up. I am wrapping up, but. Um, uh, Did you want to tell, do you want me to tell you about quickly, the strike? Can you quickly tell, tell us about yeah, the yeah. strike? Because I want to know what you guys are fighting for. Okay, great. So um, I'm and in we're the, talking about the writer's strike. Yes, okay. I'm in the Writers Guild of America and it, uh, SAG as yes. well, which is the Screen Actors Guild um, uh, Union. So the writers have been going on strike. We're now in our third week of strike um, as of this broad broadcast. Yes. And we have been asking for um, regulations on AI because mm. studios have been interested in putting like mm. maybe an AI person yes. and one human to mm. write all the scripts. And we've been asking for minimums for a writer's room because what right now what happens is they'll have a season of a show be very short and only pay a few people to do a whole entire season. And we would like to give writers the chance to not just crank out things um, mm -hmm. in a short amount of time. And we're in, also in an area where do, there's- Do writers get residual checks like actors? We do, but on streaming, it is not happening. Okay. And oh, so we okay. would like so uh, so it to be commensurate. So if you've watched the show, if it has a bump of 300, yeah. like Dear White People had a huge bump during 2020 after George Floyd died. Yes. We don't get a bump oh, in our, no. on our residual, checks. In re residual yes. checks. So these are things that we're all fighting for. And as of now, the studio is not willing to negotiate or budge on any of those points, not even have a conversation. Yeah. So that's why we've started to Do strike. Do you think AI, as smart as AI is, and I, you know, and I know AI, you can get a singer that ain't really singing and, you know, re, uh, to duplicate a voice. Do you think it can ever, like when you think about some of the funniest shows out there? No, it can never replace it. So why is that an issue for you guys? Is it a just in case? So the problem is the studios are not creative people. So they assume that AI can do it. They're like, great, we could oh. cut costs. Mm -hmm. We could oh, just put a yes. robot and yes. a human. And it's just and, and you just get regurgitated stuff. When you're like, oh wow, that person did something great. That's a human, that's a thing. Yeah. I feel like leave AI with the artist. Right. Artists oh. with AI, mm -hmm. we can do amazing things. We can break the form, right, right. learn and do stuff. But pe putting numbers people yeah. and saying like, yeah, we can do creativity with yes. robots. They're not it's a it's a different brain. Are people being supportive of the strike? Yes. Oh, so nobody's S trying to cross that picket line? Nobody's trying to cross oh. it and we are so many unions are because we're at a watershed moment, Kenya. Mm -hmm. This is not just our fight. We're we're seeing record we're seeing CEOs yeah. get huge bonuses for cutting costs because it's mm -hmm. re related to their stock prices. Yep, yep. So they're not incentivized to make great things. They're just incentivized to cut Save things. Money. Save money, cut things as mm -hmm. much, but you can just nub, whittle it down to a nub. Yeah. And how much money can you make? Right. I mean, the 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 one's enough enough. Yeah. Um, I, I was once asked somebody who has a shit ton of money, mm -hmm. um, and he said it's never enough. So that wow. let, me, let me so it's never enough. That's how they're thinking. But that's can, interesting. Yeah. But so, the but. It is actually so short-sighted because if you continue to squeeze people and squeeze people so that you can get it 
you're so you're not seeing the bigger picture because you can make the pie yeah. bigger if you are mm. not greedy. Oh, right, right. Like right, we can right, all win. Right. Like all of us could be millionaires. Right. Everybody can Everyone eat. can live, right. you know, a decent right. life. You don't have to like crush someone so yeah. that you can win. Well, um, I know I think yes. you guys may be getting some additional support in actors. Yeah, we're about to go vote. Yes. Right? Okay. I voted yes you on did? strike authorization okay. as an actor. So um, it may be a lot of you guys out there. And um, so I'm not part of the SAG or the writer. You're team. not? No. I may be a part of the producer. I I'm think part, you might be, yeah. I don't know. but um, It's a different I'm producer's still, guild I, than what we're I doing. I am super supportive. And Thank I hope you. you guys get everything you want Thank you, that you're asking for and you deserve. And I think they will eventually come to the negotiating table. Yes. And I hope sooner than later. Because we appreciate need new that. content. We're TV people. We want new shit. Yeah. Okay. So Thank with you. that, you have, okay, where can people find you? Okay, so you can. Uh, we're also gonna, I'm also gonna put it on, but just tell us. Also. Yes, I appreciate that. I am on D at dehaley.com. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yes, dehaleyhall.com. Um, on Instagram, I'm dehaley.hall. Okay. And I, you can also follow at Spadora Show. And I'll be traveling, I'll be doing two shows in LA um, on M Memorial Day Monday yes. at the Lyric okay. Hyperion and Juneteenth also at the Lyric Hyperion. I'll be doing a show in the Bay Area on the 10th. I'll keep you posted. Please. And I'll be in DC doing a show oh, okay. on the 15th, 16th, and 22nd of July. Well, I think you guys should try to, we got Bay Area, we got DC, we got LA two times. So you should definitely come out and see her, go follow her on Instagram or did you say Twitter, Facebook? I am yeah, on, okay. add to Haley on Twitter. I don't she's very funny. Okay, Thanks. so um, I think you'll have a good time listening to her and go share her moment, um, uh, Spadora. Yes. Okay, so try to check that out also. Um, we talked about so many things. I we love did. it. We did. So, in, you know, enjoy that moment with her and, you know, get information. She's sharing her story, but she's doing it with some laughs and comedy. So it's not all, you know, super sad. Right? No, it is okay. not. Okay. All right. So you have a good it's night. It's not super sad. It's a good, it's a yeah. funny story. It's yeah. fun. So, it's fun. you know, who doesn't like to laugh? And there's a there's a plot twist. So you uh -oh. get to. Plot twist. Plot we twist. all love it. And you know you won't be getting a plot twist on TV because everybody's on strike. Yeah. So um, check out her her solo. Is it the first? Yeah, solo one-woman show. Yeah. About that. And please go follow her. Check her out. And thank you, thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for having me, Kenya. Okay. This is I'm great. I'm gonna see you. We're when gonna you come be to friends the Bay. forever. Yay! <laughs> All, right, All right, thank you so much for watching um, or listening to the Truly Kenya podcast. Yeah. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks. Bye.